What's going on out there, everybody watching this? This is my Monday Night Raw after the Royal Rumble 2016 Raw Miami review. I'll be talking about the entire show. Hopefully I didn't miss any matches that I've written down of everything that was on the show. So here we go with the Raw Miami review. It was a pretty good show, basically, because The Rock showed up and something else happened anyways <clears throat> i mean you know what i'll talk about it you know what else happened that was big it was aj styles had his first singles match and made his raw debut in the ring so it kicked off with vince and stephanie coming out talking about triple h Winning the championship, basically, and talking about the Royal Rumble. So Vince and Stephanie kicked off Raw. And then they, Stephanie announced her husband and said, Here comes a new WWE champion, the King of Kings, my husband, Triple H. The new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. champion. So then Triple H comes out. He talks a little bit. I think he talked. Anyways, this segment, promo, in-ring promo, usually always kicks off Raws. I don't like that. They get boring, and they go on way too long, but whatever. Didn't really bother me, <clears throat> because I knew the rest of Raw probably wasn't going to be long in-ring in promos. And thankfully, it wasn't. You could say, I guess you could say The Rock talked in the ring too long, but I enjoyed that. That was entertaining. When The Authority and Vince and Stephanie and Triple H talk, it's not that entertaining. It gets really boring. So then they come out, and then it ends. 20-minute promo to kick off Raw. Finally, they're about to go to commercial. And the promo ends. The in-ring 20-minute promo to kick off Raw ends. And Michael Cole says that there's a major star tonight returning to the WWE. And that WWE announced on their Twitter account that a major star is returning to the company tonight on Raw. I had no clue who it was. And I didn't read Twitter today really at all. Because I was busy at work. Anyways. So. I don't know what who the big star. And I got my computer screen on. That's why there's a glare on my glasses. Anyways. I'll probably turn it off soon. So. I didn't read Twitter. Or the WWE's Twitter account. Where it said a major star is returning tonight. The first time I heard of that was. When Michael Cole announced it on Raw. Because I like to be surprised. I do not. I don't really like to read spoilers. I like to be surprised as a fan. I stay away from spoilers. Even NXT spoilers. And TNA spoilers. But sometimes. <clears throat> I do check some spoilers. Sadly and pretty stupidly. On my part. I checked. The spoiler when uh, EC3 just lost his world title last week to Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy turned heel and beat down EC3 and Tigress turned on EC3. I did read that spoiler and I wish I wouldn't have. But I did. So I knew Matt Hardy was going to win the championship when I was watching TNA last week. I wish I didn't know that but I did read the spoiler on that. So Michael Cole says a major star is returning tonight. And then they show a limo. I think after the commercial they show a limo pulling up backstage. Nobody gets out of it. And the limo just sits there for like over an hour. Or almost two hours. Anyways. And that was pretty stupid. that The limo sitting there like an hour and a half. And then who ends up getting out of it was a Miz. The Miz was, I'm sure he wasn't sitting in there for two hours, but still, Miz gets out. That was a big, big fail. That was a big disappointment. 
seeing the Miz get out. I was like, what the f fuck? He ain't no major star. And he's already on the WWE roster. So, after Michael Cole says that announcement, Raw comes back with Kevin Owens taking on Dolph Ziggler in the first match of Raw. It was a decent match. It wasn't very long. It was pretty good. I knew Dolph, sadly, I knew Dolph was going to lose. I just had that feeling that I knew Dolph Ziggler was going to lose. And he did. I'm a fan of Kevin Owens. I'm glad Kevin Owens won, but I feel bad for Dolph that he has the job all the time when he's on TV. The guy's always losing. And Dolph Ziggler, the guy is a hell of a talent. He deserves way better than jobbing to uh, jobbing other guys every single week. So, Kevin Owens wins with the pop-up powerbomb. Um, next we had... Um, what the hell was next? The Social Outcasts. They come out. They talk in the ring. Stupid Heath Slater gets on the mic. Starts calling out Flo Rider, the famous rapper. Is sitting front row. Because obviously he must live in Miami. Or he's, I know, I think he's from there. Obviously he's from Florida because his name is Flo Rider. Anyways, Slater calls out Flo Rider. That was pretty stupid. Tries to punk out Flo Rider. And I believe Flo Rider gets in the ring. That was a boring, stupid, pointless segment. And then Bo Dallas gets on the mic and challenges. Before Flo Rider comes in the ring, he challenges him to a battle rap. And he does these really stupid, lame rap. He does a really lame, boring rap. And then uh, Flo Rider does a rap, battle rap, and challenges Bo Dallas and basically destroyed him and owned him on the mic. And then the social outcast, Flo Rider says, Welcome to, or here comes Dudleyville, or welcome to Dudleyville. And then the Dudley boys' music hits, they come out. So the Dudleys... Tag match starts the Dudleys take on Bo Dallas and Axel or Curtis Axel. They basically job like they always do. The Dudleys win. And I don't know the point. I don't get I don't get the point of social outcasts. They're j they're together and they're never gonna get a push. They're just together for just to throw four jobbers together, I guess. Or they are just threw four guys together that WWE was not using on Raw's or SmackDown. So now we have the social outcast and all they're going to do every single week is continue to lose and continue to job. Dudley's winning. I was happy for the Dudley's winning because I'm a fan of theirs. Up next we had AJ Styles in his first ever backstage interview. With Renee Young. AJ backstage with Renee Young. Talks a little bit. And then Y2J shows up. During the interview. And basically says welcome. Stares at AJ. Says welcome to the big leagues kid. And stuff like that. Up next. Before AJ versus Jericho. Um, happened. We had. Michael Cole talked about Nikki. They showed a picture of Nikki Bella and said Nikki Bella needs surgery on her. She has a bulging disc or something. Something wrong with her spine. She needs surgery on her neck. So she's going to probably be out of action for a year or more. Maybe 10, maybe 10 months. Nikki Bella can come back and make a recovery. I don't know. But it sounds pretty damn serious because she needs neck surgery. And I think they called it spinal fusion surgery or something like that. So Nikki Bella, I'm not a fan of hers, is a wrestler. She's okay on Total Divas, whatever. She's entertaining on Total Divas. But I'm not a fan of her in the ring, but... I wish Nikki Bella nothing but the best 
and I hope she gets well soon and that the surgery she has is successful and that she can return someday to the ring. It would uh, suck for her if her career after surgery maybe the doctors would tell her she can never wrestle again. So maybe Nikki Bella's career in the ring may be over but she'll still have a job in WWE because she dates John Cena the face of the company and she has a spot on Total Divas. Total Divas will probably last one or two more seasons because they still get decent ratings. So Nikki Bella even though she can't return to the if she doesn't if she's not able to return to the ring ever again, she can have a job being on Total Divas and her job basically is her job in WWE is basically forever, as long as John Cena's there. So get well soon, Nikki Bella. I hope your surgery is successful, and I wish you the best, and I wish you a speedy, full recovery, because you do not deserve to be paralyzed and be in a wheelchair the rest of your life. Or if you do have neck surgery and your career is over, uh, I feel sorry for you. And get well soon, Nikki Bella. So up next was AJ Styles making his Monday Night Raw wrestling in-ring debut against Y2J Chris Jericho. This match went probably 20 minutes, or felt like 20 minutes, probably was 20 minutes with commercial breaks. Because when Raw goes to commercials, they don't stop wrestling. I've been at many Raws. And when they go to commercials, the action does not stop for the live crowd. So Y2J, AJ Styles tore the house down. They had a great match. It was very, very good, very fun to watch. I enjoyed it. AJ Styles, right decision. AJ went over. They really need to give AJ a push and not have him lose for a long time. Whoever he faces at WrestleMania, he should go over. And they should book AJ Styles to have a very long, unbeaten, undefeated streak in the WWE. In my opinion. AJ needs to go undefeated for probably a year. Or maybe six or eight months. So AJ wins over Jericho. After the match, AJ held out his hand. Wanted Jericho to shake it out of respect. For putting on a great match. During the match, Jericho had the Waza Jericho locked in. I thought AJ might tap, but I thought, damn, if AJ does tap, that is going to suck for his start in the WWE. That would not be good to have AJ Styles lose on his Raw in ring debut. That would not be good for him in the WWE. So, thankfully, AJ got. Out of the was a Jericho and got to the rope to break the hold. AJ wins again. As I said, he wins his Raw debut. It was awesome. It was great. Big fan of AJ. Have been since 2002. I have followed his entire career. The guy is awesome in the ring. The guy is one of the best in the ring. AJ Styles is phenomenal. I'm very happy he is in the WWE. And I look forward to what they're going to do with AJ and who they're going to put him in feuds with. So after AJ Jericho, we had Becky Lynch taking, or Sasha Banks, her music hit first. Sasha Banks came out, took on Becky Lynch. They had a match that could have been way better, could have went way longer, but they had to end it probably within five minutes, five or eight minutes it probably ended. Because Charlotte, the champion, the heel champion, had to run in and do a run in and attack. She didn't attack Sasha, but she attacked Becky Lynch. And then all three of them attacked each other. So that was good to see. I think they're building to a Charlotte, Becky, Sasha three-way triple threat at WWE Fastlane. I don't think they'll save it for WrestleMania. I think they'll put it on at Fastlane. Because Fastlane is three weeks away or three or four weeks away. So they should do that triple threat match for the Divas title. They should do it at Fastlane. 
I enjoyed Charlotte coming out because she is a heel champion. She wanted to get her revenge. And it was all good. Seeing Becky, Sh Sasha, Charlotte in the ring together is great. I'm a fan of all of them. They're all, all three of them are fantastic, great wrestlers. And the triple threat match they have will be great. And I'm looking forward to it. So, the Divas Division and the matches are getting much better. Finally, they brought out Sasha Banks tonight. And they had, had her own theme music playing. Finally, Naomi and Tamina were, were not coming to the ring with her. Finally, Sasha Banks is alone. She belongs to be a single star. Because she's that good. She is money as a single star. She needs to be by herself. She doesn't need anybody with her to help. That's just stupid. When they put Sasha and Sasha, when they put her in Team Bad, I fucking hated it. I did not like that. Sasha belongs alone. And Becky, Sasha, Charlotte feuding over the Divas title is best for business for the Divas division. To get over and to have the fans care about it more. And to legitimately book the division where you have we real women's wrestlers that can work going after the championship and putting on damn good women's wrestling matches that's what the fans want to see at least that's what I want to see after Becky Sasha ended in DQ because Charlotte came out and interfered we had gold dust and our truth in a Backstage segment, it got kind of weird and awkward. Goldust kept talking to our truth saying, I want you to be my partner. And then he's doing his gimmick, he's going in our truth face, going hissing at him. I don't know what the hell you call it. When Goldust goes up in someone's face and does that hiss, he did that. Our truth looked freaked out. <laughs> he looked. Like he wanted to run away and head for the hills. Then our truth says to Goldust, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're into, but I'm not into that. And says to Goldust, I'm not into swinging. It was <laughs> it was uh, it was so stupid, but it was pretty funny. And our truth said that to Goldust, I'm not into swinging. And whatever you're into, that's cool, but I'm I'm not into that. And then he kept saying to Goldust, I'm a married man, and I'm married. And then he goes, I'm not into that. I'm not into swinging. And then R-Truth walks away, and Goldust tries yelling back at him, No, I didn't mean it like that. I meant I want you to be my tag team partner. But R-Truth is already gone. And I eventually see our truth and Goldust will probably become a team very soon. And they'll probably be entertaining together. Back in the day, like Booker T and Goldust, when they were a team together, they were pretty good together and they were entertaining. So I could see our truth, the character they're making him be, like goofy, like stupid idiot, doing stupid shit, like pulling out a ladder during the Royal Rumble match. So they're having our truth act like an idiot and always making mistakes and messing up. So that character with Gold Dust character that they'll fit well together and they'll probably be a good team. Maybe they'll win the tag team titles from New Day. I don't know. So after that, Gold Dust, our truth, odd, weird, awkward segment. We had Kane versus Bray Wyatt. This was basically not, this was pretty boring. Because I've seen Kane versus Bray Wyatt too many times. I'm sick of it. It was nice to see Kane return to Raw. He's been off of Raw for like over a month or two months. But Bray Wyatt wins and, and he should win. And Bray Wyatt got thrown out of the Rumble. We all know by, tri by Triple H last night. So they need to build up Bray again to go on a winning streak. And I wish they'd give Bray Wyatt a championship, like the Intercontinental Championship or the U.S. title. Give Bray Wyatt a championship. 
So after Cain versus Jobs to Bray Wyatt and puts him over, we had the Miz. They come back, show the limo, and Rich Brenham, the announcer Rich, the guy that used to be in N and call NXT. He's backstage and he knocks on the limo window. He goes, I want to find out if anybody's in here. And then opens, someone opens the door. They start getting out. I had no clue who it was going to be. I didn't knew, I knew that The Rock would not be sitting in a limo. That'd be stupid because The Rock doesn't roll like that. He doesn't come and get out of limos when he shows up to the arena. So, The Miz gets out, which was an epic fail. Miz gets out, talks on the mic and says, I'm a huge star and I'm, I've returned to Raw. I've been off of Raw for three weeks or something stupid like that. Nobody gave a F that you returned to Raw Miz. Nobody gave a fuck, in my opinion. At least I didn't. So then the Miz keeps walking, being interviewed, and behind him, they shoot, they show on camera a big ass black truck pulls up and stops. The fans started already marking out and screaming right away when they showed that truck show up. At first, I thought maybe, maybe Stone Cold, I thought, might get out of it. But I don't think Stone Cold would want to go to Miami. And that would be kind of stupid to have Stone Cold return to promote WrestleMania in Miami. The Rock's from there. I'm sure The Rock has a house in Miami, close to the arena. So it made a lot of sense that The Rock showed up and got out of the truck. It's his hometown. He got a huge, huge face pop. The Rock will get a face pop probably in any state, any city he goes to. He'll get a face pop anyways. But he got more of a pop because it is his hometown. So he's backstage and he runs into Rick Ross, a rapper, famous rapper, Rick Ross. He goes, what's up? And hugs Rick Ross. Says, I'll talk to him later. Walks away. He sees a big show. Now Big Show's looking at a laptop. I don't know what the hell he's watching on it, but he looked embarrassed. And The Rock sh comes up to the Big Show, does a f some funny stuff, says, I just watched the Royal Rumble. I, you and me were in the last two in Royal Rumble 2000 on the network. And then he goes, you're right. He goes, you are right, Big Show. You won that Rumble. You absolutely won it. And then he goes... And the director of the Scorpion King should have put you in it. And should have put you in the movie instead of me. And then The Rock says, basically, your entire life could be different. If you would have got put in the Scorpion King, you wouldn't be here right now. And then the Big Show looked really upset about that. And then The Rock basically pissed off the Big Show. And I think he broke his laptop. He broke it in half or something. Big Show... Sits there, looks upset. Rock walks away. He's staring at somebody really long, staring at them. And then he walks up to them, and who is it? It was Lana. I knew it was going to be Lana that he was staring at because any dude would stare at Lana. She's hot as hell. Rock goes up to her, talks for a long time, says, says damn girl, or something like that. Like, damn girl, I haven't seen you in a long ass time. Since the last time, last Raw, 2000, I think 15, 14 or 15 Raw, that was in Brooklyn, the Rock goes, damn, we, we partied hard last time in the hotel, we got drunk together, and then he brought, he was ma saying all these different names of different positions that they did, and then she goes, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm engaged. I'm engaged now to Rusev. And then Rusev walks in the picture and then The Rock says a funny line about Rusev and makes fun of him. So then The Rock goes up to the gorilla position before where the wrestlers come out of the and open their curtain to walk out. And then he goes, I'm in gorilla now. And The Rock goes, finally, he says, finally, The Rock has come back. And then he does a long pose and then he says, home. Then he goes, three, two, one. And then the, his music hits. 
That was pretty cool. And then he goes out of the curtain. That was a cool setup to having The Rock come out. I've never seen any other wrestlers ever do that backstage. And then the camera shoot them behind the curtain before they come out. That was a cool setup. So then The Rock comes out, gets a massive, insane pop. Everybody's marking out. He gets on the mic, says a couple things, and he's staring at people in the crowd. He's staring at the audience. And you see, he goes outside the ring and says, I'm going off script. He goes outside the ring and interviews some of the audience that were dressed up like WWE superstars. He interviews this guy. He says, who are you, sir? And then the guy goes, he's dressed up like old school Undertaker with the gray leather gloves. Like Undertaker's 1991 look. So he goes, the guy says, I'm the Undertaker. And then he goes, who are you, sir? And the next guy goes, I'm Hulk Hogan, brother. Or something like that. And then Rock goes, damn. You've been, there must be some good weed out here. Or or something like you had some good weed or something. Or goes, damn, you've been smoking too much of that weed. That's what The Rock, I think, said to him. Something like that. That was pretty funny. Crowd laughed and thought it was funny. Then The Rock sees this other dude dressed up like him. And he goes, damn, you're a handsome looking son of a bitch. Then he goes, who are you? And then the guy goes, The Rock. And then the rock goes, come here, hugs him, and then goes, damn, you're too close to get away from me. <laughs> and that was pretty funny. Then the rock goes back in the ring, and it was about to talk, and then the New Day's music hit. This was epic. This was an epic, funny as hell, entertaining as hell segment. I loved it because I'm a New Day fan, and I'm also a fan of the rock. Every time the rock comes on a pay-per-view or a raw the guy is money the guy is great the guy's the most electrifying he's not called the most electrifying man in sports entertainment for nothing he is the the rock is damn entertaining and there will never be another guy like the rock in the wwe's history in my opinion so then the uso not the Uso. Well, New Day talks for a long time, putting down the rock, saying a lot of funny shit. Just New Day just being themselves, being funny as hell, not even trying that hard, just being themselves and having fun out there. Because I'm sure Kofi, Woods, and Big E, they all get along, so they were just all having fun together in the ring with the rock. Rock stayed quiet for a long time. New Day put him down put down Miami and said, oh, LeBron used to play here. And now he went back to a better city. He went back to Cleveland. That was pretty funny. And then The Rock finally gets on the mic and then basically tears apart the New Day by just one little line. He goes, why are you wearing llama penises on your head? <laughs> and the crowd loved that. They ate it up. And then a llama penis chant started. I'm sure Llama Penises was trending on Twitter. That's funny as hell. Great segment. I'm, I'm sure probably was the highest rated segment of Raw. I'm sure it's going to be. When the ratings come out, I believe that is Hour 3, the kickoff of Hour 3. I'm sure that will be the highest rated segment of tonight's Raw. So, then the Rock goes here... Here are my boys, the Usos. And then they come out and they attack the New Day. And then the segment ends. It was great. Again, it was great to see The Rock appear on Raw. It felt like a felt like a big time Raw. When I saw The Rock show up, it felt like special. It felt very big. Just like a very big episode of Raw. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed The Rock. I really enjoyed what the New Day did in the ring with him. They are awesome. The New Day rocks. You know I'm a fan of theirs. I've said it before many times. Usos attack New Day. I'm sure they'll have a title match again for the F Fast Lane for the tag title. After that, we had Natalia and Paige 
go up against Bree and Alicia Fox because this was this had to happen because it was a total divas match of the night. Every week on every Raw, they got to have a total divas match because total divas just came back. They're promoting it. So they're going to have Total Divas matches on Raw every single Monday until, until the season of Total Divas is up and over. So they put an Italian page as a team again. It's great to see Natalia on Raw again. And it's great to see Paige because she's hot as hell. And she's a great worker. Alicia and Brie as a team, they're going to continue teaming them up because Nikki's out of action. They're just a pointless team, in my opinion. And they're never, probably ever, not Brie or Alicia are never going to get singles pushes. Because they're not very, they're, I mean, Alicia's a good wrestler, but she's not great. So Brie and Alicia are never going to get a Divas title run again, I, I feel. And they really shouldn't. And Natalia, I would like to see her get another run as Divas champion. And I like Paige is young. I think she's only 23 years old. So Paige probably has 10 more years of being in the WWE. And Paige will, when her career's over, Paige will probably be the um, will probably be the only diva to have the longest, the most reigns as Divas champion. She'll probably break Trish's record of six or seven title reigns. I I won't be surprised at all. If Paige leaves WWE and ends her career as the diva that has had the most title reigns ever in WWE history. So that ends. It was a total divas match of the night. At least that's what I call it. Because Becky and uh, Sasha, even though it was short, that was still better. And they're not on total divas. And Charlotte is not on total divas either. So, they're basically the division, in my opinion. They are the Divas division. Up next, we had Kalisto, the new U.S. champion, take on The Miz, which was a pretty boring match. During Kane and Bray Wyatt, we had a lot of Randy Savage chants. They were probably chanting that because the guy in the first row was dressed as Randy Savage, and he was probably pointing up to the sky like the Macho Man used to. And the fans started chanting Randy Savage because that guy was dressed like him. So that's my guess as why they were chanting it. Anyways, this match, it was okay. Good Kalisto got a win, but I didn't care for it. I was pretty bored with it. But Kalisto wins Miz jobs as he usually always does. Or Miz is basically a jobber that always jobs the champ champions or main event guys after Kalisto defeated Miz we had the main event coming up next which after the rock after the rock in the new day segment and after AJ versus Jericho Raw could have ended right there but no they had to put on a main event and I wasn't very interested in it it was pretty boring to me because I've seen Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns I have nothing against them, I'm a fan of theirs they're great talents, but I've seen Dean Ambrose and Roman take on Sh Sheamus and Rusev and Sheamus and the League of Nations I've seen them feud and take on each other probably feels like 20 times and I'm sick of it so it was really it was a boring main event to me I was on Twitter for most of it. I didn't really watch it. I didn't pay attention to it until the finish. Or until Stephanie came out and announced her announcement. So Dean and Roman win. That was expected. The League of Nations. I'm okay with them if they get rid of Sheamus. I'm not a Sheamus fan at all. The guy looks like a fucking idiot. So then Stephanie, after Dean and Roman win, Stephanie comes out, makes her big announcement for Fastlane. In the main event of Fastlane, the winner goes to WrestleMania to face Triple H. So I guess Triple H is not going to defend his title until WrestleMania. 
but he doesn't really need to, but still, he should defend it at least once before WrestleMania. So Stephanie announces the main event for Fastlane. Winner goes to WrestleMania to get a WWE World Heavyweight Championship shot. It is Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose in a triple threat match at WWE Fastlane. That should be very entertaining and it will be very fun to watch. That main event at Fastlane. I would like to see, uh, I don't think Brock will win. I doubt it. I think Roman is going to win and take on Triple H at WrestleMania, but I, I'll be cheering for Brock, even though I doubt he wins. This ends my Raw Miami review. Hope you enjoyed it. If you watched my uh, Royal Rumble review, if you watched five minutes of it or 25 minutes or the whole video, thank you for watching it. I don't know how the hell I got so many views on it. It just happened. A lot of the views are probably off. Um, the link I put up on Twitter with the hashtag Royal Rumble. That, so a lot, a lot of new fans that have never watched my videos before. A lot of new fans from Twitter must have clicked on my Royal Rumble review video to get so many damn reviews on it. To get so many, not reviews on it, to get so many views on it. I don't know how it happened, but I was very happy that my Royal Rumble review video got a lot of views. And I don't know, I mean, people, if you don't know how views work, someone can click on your video and watch it for one or two seconds and you get a view. So maybe, I'm sure a lot of those people that clicked on my Royal Rumble review I'm sure a lot of them probably only watched it for a minute and then turned it off. But it still counts as a view on YouTube anyways. I know it counts as a view when someone watches a video for like two seconds. They count it as a view. So if any of my followers on Twitter watched my Royal Rumble review, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And maybe some of you will watch this Raw Miami review or maybe some of you did watch some of this Raw Miami review if you did thank you very much thank you for supporting my YouTube channel and watching some of my videos that I send you links on or I send my link to this Raw review Miami to some of you followers that I like on Twitter and that I'm friends with I send you the link and hopefully you watch it. You don't have to, but hopefully you do. Anyways, bye for now. Follow me at TNA WWE Guy and at NXT WWE Guy. This was my Raw Miami after the Royal Rumble 2016 review. Bye for now.